Defense. He's a champion of utilizing diplomatic channels to raise awareness and understanding of the Kashmir issue. And he has spoken extensively to domestic and international audiences regarding uh, Kashmiri struggle for uh, self-determination. And uh, oh, we have requested him today to speak uh, about the situation as it is, and particularly the conditions that have sort of uh, panned out since 5th August 2019. So uh, without much further ado, over to you, Senator Sahab, and thank you once again for joining us today. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum and greetings from Islamabad. Uh, uh, Your Excellency, Madam Aisha Ali, one of the best and the brightest in our foreign service, who is serving with distinction in New York, and uh, other uh, panelists, uh, my colleagues. Uh, today is, of course, uh, the, just the day before we have the Kashmir Solidarity Day, and I'm just coming back from Parliament. We had a special Senate session devoted to Kashmir because tomorrow is Saturday, it's a holiday. So we had a, a discussion. I also made a speech. And I think there are important elements of the situation, how it has changed after 5th August 2019 when India illegally annexed occupied Kashmir, bifurcated it, uh, contrary to the UN uh, resolutions to which it has been a party for the last 70 years. So this has been a gross violation, not only of the rights of the Kashmiri people, but also of international law and the United Nations resolutions to which India is a party. And I think that uh, what sums up the situation uh, in the current context of how there are changes which are taking place concurrently in Indian occupied Kashmir and within India itself uh, is the famous op-ed I saw in the New York Times uh, by the famous Indian lady, a brave lady, uh, who is a well-known writer, Arunduthi Roy. And uh, she's, uh, the op-ed was titled, Silence is the Loudest Sound. And she said, and I quote, in today's India, RSS is the state. And as you know, RSS is the neo-Nazi version of the ruling party, which is dominating India, and which is the ideological wing of the ruling BJP, to which Mr. Modi also belongs. And the second thing she mentioned was that in today's India, and this appeared in the New York Times, by the way, uh, there is an architecture of fascism being erected. And this is quote unquote from Arunduthi Roy as published in the op ed in the New York Times. Now, when we see these two transformations trying to change the demographic balance in Indian occupied Kashmir to turn a majority into a minority, they have issued 4 million domiciles to outsiders. They have added 1.2 million people to the voters' lists. They have arrested 15,000 people after 5th of August 2019. Uh, they have uh, sold off uh, Kashmiri land to outsiders. Uh, they have had over 500 extra judicial killings in occupied Kashmir. And according to the Washington Post, the loss to the Kashmiri economy of uh, this annexation has been $5.3 billion, which means also a loss of jobs to 500,000 Kashmiris. And on top of that, we have had the longest internet lockdown in history. For 213 days, the people in occupied Kashmir had no access to the internet. And on top of that, there is a 900,000 strong Indian occupation force to enforce this diktat. And at the same time, we see a transformation of India, which was once a pluralist, inclusive society of different communities and faiths into a republic of Hindutva based on cleavage, bigotry and hatred. And it was uh, best summed up uh, by the recent testimony by Dr. Gregory Stanton, the chairman of the uh, this uh, genocide watch, which he gave to the American Congress on 12th of January, 2022. This year, 12th of January, 2022, Gregory Stanton, the founding chairman of the genocide watch, gave a testimony where he says that what we are seeing in India, and especially in occupied Kashmir, they are the makings of a genocide. And I think it's that testimony is worth reading because he lists specific 
steps which are taken in the uh, when uh, genocide uh, there are markers he mentions about how they classify us versus them how there is discrimination there is deed humanization how the new nazi uh, rss is taking charge false propaganda lynchings and also polarization and so forth so this is a very serious allegation and the us holocaust uh, uh, memorial has also endorsed this allegation and they said this is a holocaust in the making and what we are seeing also is that concurrently within india and within occupied kashmir there has been very strong resistance to repression and i salute all those who have been arrested and i just like to give an example of one couple uh dr kasim faktu has been in jail for 27 years on trumped up charges his wife asia andrabi a peaceful uh, activist for kashmiri freedom has been in jail for last 7 8 years and this is one example apart there are a lot of others who are there but political prisoners are a very important element in this thing and this has been documented in various human rights reports including the human rights watch in new york as well as uh, the uh, amnesty international that is why you are seeing the press in the western countries talk about india the way they have done in such critical terms time magazine had a cover story on mr modi they called him divider in chief the economist had a cover story intolerant india america's most prestigious prize in journalism and media is the pulitzer prize which was given to kashmiri photographers last year for the photographs it took especially of a child sitting on the dead body of his grandfather who had been shot dead in cold blood so i mean there are so much incidences and what uh, madam aisha ali said very clearly it's not about terror it's about the people i remember i was in india a few years ago i was addressing the observer research foundation they said why are you interested in kashmir i said we are not interested in kashmir we are interested in the kashmiri people it's about people it's about humanity it's about saving lives and it's not about real estate now when we talk of these issues what do you think should be the way forward and i think that is the uh, key thing which is important this seminar webinar is extremely important because it's important to understand and recall the injustice which is being done in indian occupied kashmir and it's not just injustice and the human rights violations it's also an issue linked with peace security and stability because kashmir being the core issue of contention and dispute between india and pakistan and who are both nuclear neighbors was a nuclear flashpoint and people forget i remember i was special envoy of the prime minister in october 2016 in new york at the united nations and i was talking to the un under secretary general at that time and he said uh, look here senator these kashmir resolutions are so old they are 40 50 years old the last time i think the un passed a resolution mentioning kashmir was 40 years ago i said uh, i told the gentleman i said you are wrong the last resolution was passed 20 years ago he said no i don't of course not there is no record of that i said there is so i called this i said please call your secretary i said the resolution number 1172 passed on june 6 1998 unanimously by the un security council mentions the problem the dispute of jammu and kashmir as the core issue which is linked with peace security and stability so he was taken aback even he did and dr malia lodi then the ambassador of pakistan to the un was with me uh, in that meeting so this is i think this important to jog people's memory reinforce and that is why uh, mr net uh, the sage and the others who have passed this resolution in the new york state assembly deserve our accolades and our appreciation for doing a service to the kashmiri cause which is a just cause secondly there is also this issue of lawfare gambia which is a small country in africa 500000 population went to the international court of justice in november 2019 on the issue of the massacre and genocide in myanmar of the rohingya community the international court of justice upheld the plea of gambia and the myanmar military junta was penalized the myanmar government was penalized although at that time aung san suu kyi the nobel laureate was part of the government so 
they won the case on legal and moral and political grounds. So I think it's important that RSS, they've already been taken to court in London. They were also taken to court uh, in Houston uh, by uh, uh, Kashmir group in July 2019, when there was the Howdy Modi program, which Mr. Trump also participated in, and uh, uh, summons were issued to Mr. Modi. So I think this is an important thing that RSS is a new fascist organization whose policies are based on hate speech. And the US knows about this issue so much whether it's the issue of uh, Black Lives Matter, whether it's an issue of anti-Semitism, whether it's an issue of Islamophobia, this is something which the world, the civilized world is not going to accept under any circumstances in any civilized country. So I think that is extremely important. In my view, 70% of the battle is about the battle of ideas, the battle of narratives. We have to take this Kashmir cause forward, Kashmiri diaspora, parliamentary diplomacy, academia, media, think tanks, I think they have to take it forward. The case is very strong. The situation is very opportune. You remember last year, Senator Robert Menendez, chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee in the US Senate, wrote a letter to Secretary of Defense Austin when he was visiting New Delhi, raising his voice for and concerns on human rights. So there is a resonance of this issue in the United States as well. And I mentioned Gregory Stanton of the Genocide Watch, Human Rights Watch and the UN Secretary General also issued a statement last year on the International Day of Children where he talked of killing uh, uh, use of pellets by the Indians on 30th of June 2021 and the European Parliament also joined hands. So the time has come to join hands to raise this issue at different fora and especially the, among the parliamentarians and other places and the Kashmiri people are facing the worst kind of repression that we have uh, seen and the people in Pakistan and the civilized world will stand with this just cause. I thank you for your patience and I thank uh, Her Excellency Aisha Ali for organizing uh, a very timely initiative and I look forward to hearing some of the other participants in this context. But I'll have to leave in the next 15 minutes because there's another engagement. Our Prime Minister is in China and people are talking of Pakistan-China relations also. So I have to be then going off to some other program or of course online but I thank you once again for your invitation. It was a pleasure and uh, a privilege to participate. Thank you so much. Thank you, so much. thank you so much. I, I think you uh, spoke, mashallah, as you always do very well. And you have raised points that uh, I think are going to be very useful uh, for all the people who are listening to you, especially the international and the human rights violations part of it, which we sometimes tend to kind of overlook or which because of the Indian um, media and because of the focus on other things tends to be sometimes uh, tends to go to, into the background. Thank you so much. Um, our other special guest uh, today morning with us is assembly person Nader Sage. And like yourself, sir, he also has only limited time at his disposal. So we're going to request him for his remarks. I join everyone, all the Pakistanis, Pakistani Kashmiri diaspora, and thanking him again for the role that he played in Thank the resolution. Our salutations to Mr. N Nader Sage for his heroic work. Thank you, assembly member. Thank you very much. Good morning. Uh, it's my pleasure to be to join uh, this very special event. And I, as a New York State Assemblyman, I really take pride my entire life as a student of law, student of international uh, coexistence, as someone that has lobbied my entire adult life for interfaith uh, dialogue, lobbied for humanitarianism, lobbied for the causes of the disenfranchised and the disadvantaged, and not only on the local or the statewide level here in New York, but also on the international scene. And uh, many of us have witnessed over the years many serious violations of international law. We witness many serious humanitarianism issues where people have suffered unnecessarily. So anytime there's an opportunity, whether in my capacity as a member of the New York community 
or as a member of the New York State legislative body, as a member of the New York State Assembly, to be able to, to bring about greater awareness of whether it's supporting people's identity, people's cultural values, people's misfortunes for various reasons. It's something that I take pride in and I feel responsible to do. Uh, I was, I'm very happy that our, His, Her Excellency Council General of Pakistan in New York, Aisha Ali, undertook this very worthy telephone to really expose and explore and make us all communicate because nothing is more important than awareness. And the more people become aware, whether it's a regional conflict or any issues in society and in civilization, it becomes a heightened level when there's more awareness. And really listening to you, uh, Senator Mushahid Hussein, uh, you really know your history and uh, you know, and you're right. There's been many instances on the local, national, international scene where statements were made to really uh, make very clear that there's serious violations involved in Kashmir and, uh, and there's a, a level of injustice that really can't be ignored. So, and I'd like to state that for me, my avenue to really get involved this past year and a half and to really begin to promote more dialogue about Kashmir really took place with special outreach from your community. And although I've had a tremendous amount of links that I've personally enjoyed with the Pakistani and Kashmiri community in my city of Yonkers and in New York State. But it was really my good friend Ali Rashid that really came aboard, reached out, and really expressed that there were some serious concerns. And when we sat together and uh, we had dialogue about the situation in Kashmir, I really took it upon myself working with Ali to really work together with the Pakistan-American Advocacy Group and really looking for ways to promote what we spoke about awareness. And that awareness, in my opinion, at that level was to really go to the state level. New York State at the Assembly and Senate level has had a history of promoting memorable or worthy individuals, activities, events, some of them are commemorating, you know, good things as well as bad things in our history that the public in New York needed to become aware. So we undertook the effort and drafted with Ali's help and the American Pakistani Advocacy Group, their efforts, more, more information that we put in the form of a resolution that we presented and it was passed in the New York State Assembly on February 5th, 2021. And I wanted, if it's okay, to read the resolution for the listening audience, because this was made public. This was agreed upon, signed by the governor, then governor Andrew Como, and it became part of the official uh, resolution base at the state level. And this commemorates and proclaims February 5th, 2021, as Kashmir American Day in the state of New York, whereas the legislative body is justly proud to memorize Governor Como to proclaim February 5th, 2021 as Kashmir American Day in the state of New York, and it is to be observed by Kashmiri statewide celebrating the Kashmiri culture, identity, and the Kashmiri community has overcome adversity shown perseverance and established themselves as one of the pillars of the New York immigrant communities. And whereas Kashmiri people living around the world speak the kosher language and practice their distinct and ancient rites of Islam, Hinduism, and Sikhism, and in the recognition of their unique cultural identity and storied history, which has its roots in the Himalayan foothills and the Per Panjal range 
helps to keep the Kashmiri identity alive. And whereas the state of New York endeavors to champion human rights, including the freedom of religion, movement and expression for all Kashmiri people, which are embedded within the United States Constitution through the recognition of diverse cultural, ethnic and religious identities. And whereas New York State is a leader in terms of progress and social justice, this legislative body acknowledges that this resolution makes New York the first state to recognize Kashmir American Day. And whereas by consistently honoring Kashmiri cultural identity, it provides both the American public with a greater awareness of their struggles and the Kashmiri diaspora community with a symbol of hope for the future now and therefore be it resolved, of course, American Kashmiri Day. This resolution was really a forefront of a cause that has lived on for many years. And this is really an opportunity for us here in New York to begin not only to promote by dialogue, but to really express, you know, in, in many of our eyes and our thoughts and our hearts, injustice to people in Kashmir. And it really is symbolic of what we stood for here in America to abide by constitutional values, to abide by support for struggles that promote identity, struggles that promote equality and diversity. And this is really the message that we hear in this forum and throughout the dialogue. Uh, and I'm very proud to undertake this effort. I'm very proud to continue to work with members of the American Pakistani Advocacy Group. And again, I commend Her Excellency, Senator and all the, the observers and the participants for taking on an active role. And Ali, uh, you're to be commended for continuously reaching out, speaking up, because this is what it takes. Very often it's, uh, it's mandatory that whenever we support a cause, whenever we support a struggle, that people have to speak up and people have to reach out whether it's to government officials, civic organizations, United Nations agencies, worldwide agencies, and to really begin to express and portray, in this case, a struggle of a people, a struggle for identity. And again, we're not saying this is political. I look at it and every one of us looks at this as a human struggle, as a basic right of humanity and that is to respect people, whether they're Kashmirian or people all across the world that live in countries and regions that are torn apart by conflict. And this is really a message to the global community that peaceful coexistence and diversity is crucial. So I take pride in joining this effort. I'm happy to be part of this dialogue and I thank each and every individual for their role, whether big or small, in promoting the message. Thank you very much.